Hello, we're here at the Lancaster Science Factory today and we're going to film a segment on topo maps. A lot of times people look at topo maps a little bit confused what all the lines mean and there's a pretty cool tool in the Science Factory, uh, it's called a topographic table. We're going to go in there and use that table to uh, kind of hopefully show everybody how to better understand topo maps. Let's check it out. A lot of times people look at a topo map and they get kind of confused with all the lines and not sure what everything means. So, um, first of all, a topo map is a map with lines and lines represent elevation changes. The lines are called contour lines. Um, as those lines get closer together, it represents like a steeper hill. Um, and as they're further apart, it represents more gradual like terrain. The lines are often are, are labeled with elevations and obviously the greater the, the number, the higher the elevation. So if you're trying to decide if you're looking at like the top of a mountain or the bottom of a valley, you got to look at the number that is associated with that contour line to decide if it's higher or lower than the surrounding areas. So the reason we're at the Science Factory today is they have this kind of neat thing here I saw one time when I was here with my kids. Um, it's a box that's full of, it used to be full of like clay, but they have rice in it now. And it has some kind of camera here that you can actually simulate like a topo map and it'll actually lay out contour lines based on the elevation or the depth of the rice in this box. So let's take a look at it here real quick. Yeah, so these lines represent like different elevations. And I mean, I tried to level it, but you do see there's slight elevation changes. But just for starters, just start with, if we're gonna make just like a mound or a mountain in the middle of this flat area that I just made. Take a second update. Okay, so there's the mountain we just made. And you can see the different contour lines as it goes up. This, this uh, device they have here actually uh, represents elevation with color as well. So the yellow represents higher, the green lower, and the blue is like the flatter lower areas. But I'm really focusing today on the lines more than the colors. Um, you can see the lines change. It actually makes like a circle or an oval shape as it goes up the hill. And the top of the, the hill or mountain we have represented here, you can see it right here is, is a little circle. That's the highest point. So if you were to see this on a map, you know, you'd be looking at a mountain, but also at the same time, if you did a hole, you kind of get the same representation, a circle, and with these lines getting uh, tighter together and, you know, as it gets down, the only difference between the, the mountain and this valley is these contour lines and, and elevation associated with them. So that's kind of like if you, if you were looking at a topo map and you saw a circle or oval and you weren't sure if it was a mountain top or a valley bottom, you got to look at the elevation based on those contour lines. That gets just started. Obviously, you know, water goes downhill, so you often find your rivers and streams in the bottom of these valleys. And then, you know, tops of mountains usually don't have that kind of thing. So just what we're going to do today is we're going to try to show some different topography you look for when hunting. Um, and we're going to represent it. I'm going to try to, I'm going to build a mountain here, a ridge. And we'll just kind of work it from there. Okay, so we just made a mountain here in this, uh, this box and you can see that as it goes up you have your contour lines wrapping around this mountain top at the top of the mountain here you have a couple high spots these little circles are your highest points so if you were to encounter this mountain um, you know to hunt you wouldn't be curious like where, where you're looking for for where deer are going to maybe um, congregate or focus more um, things that people often talk about is um, like a saddle so we'll start with that maybe so this pretty much is a flat top to this mountain that I made but a saddle would be just a low spot in that mountaintop. And you can see right there how you have a high point here and then a high point here and this low area here. That's what a saddle is. It's just a lower section on like a top of a mountain or a ridge. And with, you know, with deer, do you often use this is deer, you know, they're lazy, like basically lazy kind of. They, um, they look for easy ways to get around the room around their habitat and to conserve energy. So if a deer wanted to get from this side of the mountain to this side of the mountain, he could either go up over the whole top here, but what often is the case is they'll use a saddle and they'll kind of wrap up through and go through the saddle and drop down the other side. Basically, they can cover the same, get to the same side of the mountain a lot, a lot less energy use. Um, also, in the saddle, if there's a deer running this ridge top, he's going to drop down in this low spot here and come back up the other side. So really, right inside this part of the saddle here is often a good area to find, you know, a, a setup if you're you know in that situation. Um, let's build this back up here. Here in Pennsylvania we have a lot of uh, long ridges and mountains and something a lot of guys talk about is benches. So what a bench is is basically it's a flat area on a mountain's hillside. So you have this mountain top here and you can see your, your 
um, contour lines are, are kind of parallel to the mountain, but over here you have this section I just made a flat area where these contour lines actually um, get a little further apart. And remember we talked about the further apart there, the more gradual it is. So this bench here we created this flat area on the side of this mountain. You can kind of see how it's, it's steeper here and it's steeper on the point there, but it's flat here. So what a deer would often do is they may bed here, they may bed here on like a leeward wind. So if a wind's coming off, um, in this, say from this side here, and they bed on this side, especially if it's toward the top third or so of the mountain, um, they like to bed in these locations. Also, if a deer is cruising this hillside, again, to conserve energy, if they were walking, they could be walking this steep, you know, steep habitat, which may use more energy, it might be harder, rocky, blow downs. Um, so they'll hit this bench and they'll walk this bench a great distance or you know considerable ways to kind of um, cover the same ground with a lot less energy use. Um, so oftentimes you'll see rub lines and trails on these benches. I don't know, is that showing up okay, Lane? Yeah, it's all right. It's kind of hard to see, but I mean, again, you can get your steeper side here. You also get some funneling effect because if a deer is coming up this mountain, it's steeper here before you get to this bench. They may come up, hit this bench, and then kind of angle up the hillside here. So you can get some trails a lot of times, like where a bench starts or ends. So that's stuff you can look for as well. Um, some other things you might see on a ridge like this is, and this happens a lot, is like a stream or a drainage system. So let's just kind of draw our finger down like this, representing like a, a river flowing down. Obviously there's no water in this, but um, you can see how it, it, it kind of is, resembles in some ways the saddle we looked at earlier. Um, you have this section here where kind of uh, the top of the mountain dips down a little bit. But it, especially here, this, this drainage I made, if this gets really steep on either side or in certain sections, it's harder for a deer running this ridge to get across that. So what you often have the case, what's often the case is the deer will either funnel low or high around this drainage system to try to, uh, you know, get across this ridge and um, to do it in a way that doesn't kind of uh, make them, you know, encounter steep rocky habitat or whatever. So that's where, um, you know, what you can do if you have a drainage system is you can look for trails above and below and that's what it would look like on a topo map. You know, you got your contour lines for your mountaintop and they kind of dip in. And you see this, how, they, how these lines dip in here. That represents a drainage, um, like a creek. It could be a river, it depends on the size of it. Obviously, it can go on an angle, you know, and like really kind of, you might have two of them come together. You know, and you kind of just see how like the different areas here where like there's a little bit of elevation and little points that, that kind of pop up on these systems. Here you have a, a drainage and then you have a, a little um, secondary ridge kind of coming off the main ridge, almost like a spur. Um, so the, where this ridge comes up and meets the main ridge, that point there may be a good location to intercept deer that are cruising the ridge top and also this, uh, this spur here coming off. The, the, if this drainage isn't very steep and it's kind of gradual habitat, a lot of times deer will, if they're trying to climb this mountain, they'll use that to funnel up the mountain. So you have them traveling up those drainages a lot of times, paralleling like maybe the stream or whatever is in there. Uh, so you can find that kind of thing in there as well. Um, I kind of covered it right now, but you know, um, at the end of all these ridges, you got you know like a point. You know, a point is where you have like um, a the, the lines make like a U shape or a bend, and those points are a lot of times where you find can find bedding. Um, if the point's gradual, the ear again will funnel up or down that point to get from the ridge top to the valley floor below. But also like. Um, if you follow the hunting beast or uh, the hunting public, they often talk about looking for bedding on points, like on leeward hills and things. This is the kind of thing you'd be looking for if the wind was coming off this ridge top, especially on a slight angle. Say it was coming, you can see my finger coming from this direction here. You get bedding on this corner, vice versa, come this direction, you get bedding on this corner. And uh, you know, you can see how that can uh, change based on like the wind where the deer would can bed on this point, different locations depending on the wind direction. Um, Something that, you know, in this representation we have in this uh, box here, we just have one ridge, but more often the case, like in Pennsylvania, you have, you know, all kinds of things happening. Kind of just build a bunch of stuff up here. And that's the kind of thing you'd probably see if you look at a topo map in certain areas. And you can see it's kind of a mix. You got low lying areas, maybe pond or swamp bottoms, kind of here and here. And you see how the lines kind of make the same circles or whatever as they drop lower in elevation. But again, you the contour lines to determine if it's a high or a low area. Same kind of thing, this circle's here, but look up top, here's a ridge top. And um, you know, that's the top of a mountain there. And then you got 
the ridge comes across here. And you have some, there's a small saddle right here. You got this high, high point here and a high point here and a saddle here. So, you know, deer may be traveling from this uh, theoretical swamp bottom here to the back side of this ridge, may travel this saddle here to get across. Uh, they may run this ridge line. You can see this little um, cut in here. It could be a drainage system. They kind of funnel above it. So this is all kind of things you can kind of make assumptions based on maps where to look for scouting. You can really break down where you want to go by targeting areas you know that affect deer movement. Um, again, like saddles, points, the different funnels. Um, and you can kind of target those areas more with your scouting and save yourself a heck of a lot of walking. All right. Let me know you're ready. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so we just, we just built up another um, theoretical ridge here in this box. Um, I kind of made it just all different kind of types of like terrain to kind of, so we can maybe talk about maybe a little bit about bedding and that kind of thing. So let's have a look at this here. See, it's kind of shaped like a, maybe like a four leaf clover or whatever. But um, you can see your high ground, it's straight up in red, but also the contour lines up top here. You have your circles and they get, you know, they get closer together. In some of these sections here where it's steeper, um, you have some more flat areas where the lines are further apart here coming out like this theoretical point. You can see different little small saddles, like here's one here, that a little high spot, here's a high spot. Those saddles over here. We got a drainage system here and here draining these, this, this mountain top to the valley floor below. Um, so, you know, deer bed, especially uh, big buck bed, you know, dependent on the wind um, in pretty much all cases. So, um, if we have wind, let's talk about wind coming off from the back of this box to this way. So, they're gonna bed on leeward sides of these hills. So they're out of the wind, but they can use their eyes and, and ears to kind of monitor the valley floor below. Uh, or the you know the, the terrain below them, and then they can use their nose to check what's behind them. So if we have a wind direction like this coming from this way towards you, lean toward the camera, you can get bedding on this hillside here. You may get some bedding in these subtle little cuts on these little corners here. On the back side here, you get some bedding. You have bedding along here, and it, it's usually on the top third of the of the of the mountain or hilltop. There is some I found there's some it, it, um, times there's an exception to that, especially if you get like a a flat point, like a lower lower point here. So they may bed not on this main hill, they may drop down on these spurs or secondary ridges and get on like a, a point on the leeward side of the hill behind, um, you know, out of the wind. Um, but it kind of gets them away from the main ridge. Um, you do got to watch certain areas when you get like a, um, a valley like this. If you were going to hunt this or target this valley here or this drainage system here, and if you're hunting on a wind coming out of this direction, the way this hill kind of comes around here, you could get some really bad swirling effects here of this, you know, with the wind. As the wind comes across the top of this ridge, hits this opposite ridge, it may swirl around here and may be really hard to hunt that kind of spot. That's why I like, personally, I like to focus more where you get like, the, where it comes out away from the other stuff, you know, that you're out away from other um, terrain, like on a point. So like in this case here, down in here maybe, right in here, um, out this ridge, it could be anywhere along this side, again, with that wind coming off the back, the leeward side of the hill. And then when the wind direction changes, uh, you know, as it moves maybe more towards you lane coming from you toward the back here, you can come around the other side of the ridge and hunt this stuff, this point out here. You know, it's kind of a nice point here, looking at this valley below. Same over here. And, I mean, we're just talking about where they bed. You also gotta think about where they're gonna feed at. So, you know, there could be, there could be acorn, you know, oak trees, um, different mass trees up on these, you know, ridge tops. A lot of times, like here in Pennsylvania, you find uh, croplands in the lower lying areas, and the deer you know not, or migrate down off the tops of the mountains to to feed in the evenings, and come back back up in the, in the morning. So you know you can get on some of these. Um, if you know they're they're going to go bed on one of these points, or you can assume they're heading for a point based on your scouting. You find like buck sign. You can um, you know set up trying to catch those deer, come back to that location, come back to that location in the morning. Um, you know to bed, or vice versa, catching them leaving in the evening. Okay, so we made another another um, kind of ridge system here in this on this topo table, and what we got here is we got kind of a long snaking ridge line, kind of hooks out here at the end, but we got a point here, another point here, and you can notice the contour lines out here get a little further apart here, so that might be a little bit of a bench there or a little bit of a flat area. Um, here we got this point, you can see your contour lines. Certain areas are steeper than others, so. 
this point here coming down, you see these lines are further apart. That represents a more gradual slope. And then you get in here in this uh, drainage system, they're a little closer together, really close together here as you approach that mountaintop. Um, I'm going to cut that out of there real quick so I can show you. Uh, I just knocked the part of that ridge top out, but I wanted to represent a saddle. So this mountain comes around, and here we have a lower spot in the mountaintop where we have a saddle. You have your high ground here and your high ground here. You can see your uh, circles on your contour lines as you're approaching your mountaintop. Obviously, this mountain here is a little lower than this mountain, but this lower section here, the saddle, you know, we, we all read about, you know, saddles being a good target area for uh, to hunt, you know, that would be a saddle. Um, you know, in this drainage, if they're deer kind of coming from here to this side, and they may travel through there through this drainage system. Um, we kind of have a this ridge here coming across. It again drops down here, forming a little saddle, and we also have this little little knob out here. I mean, these are kind of generic terms I'm using, like knob or whatever, but it's just like a little bit of higher ground off the the, the ridge, and that could be where like a deer beds, you know, or it could be um, a lot of times elevation affects like the uh, growth of uh, different trees and different. Um, you know, browse types. Um, I know like in Pennsylvania here, a lot of times your north facing slopes have mountain laurel and rhododendron on them. If you get up in the mountains, that's all pretty tough stuff to walk through and navigate. So if you were to look at this map and you, and you know one side of it was, let's say the toward the wall here was north and you were trying to decide maybe where you should go here or if you should even venture to this side of the mountain. If it's an area there's a lot of mountain laurel, there's a good chance these bowls back in here or these uh, drainage systems back in here could have laurel on them and it could be really thick and nasty, tough to walk through. It may, it may be pretty attractive for deer to bed in or a, you know, a security cover. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, oaks, uh, you know, you can find oaks in the bottoms and on the tops, but you know, different oaks, like different areas. I, I do know that also, um, you know, the, a, a tree's ability to, to, to drop like nuts or fruit or whatever is affected by, you know, like how dry it is or how much um, sunlight it gets, that kind of thing. So if you're hunting maybe one side of this theoretical mountain here and you're not having much acorns, uh, maybe that year was a pretty hot summer or maybe it was a windstorm or, or something that happened right toward the end of the growing season and all these acorns here didn't make it. But the other side of the mountain, maybe in some of these sheltered valleys or, or, or you know, um, drainage systems, it could have be you know, just having more shade being on a north facing slope or whatever. Um, could have stayed a little bit more damp longer and therefore the trees could be in better shape. So you, just because you're not seeing maybe masts or acorns on one side of a mountain or hill um, doesn't mean that you shouldn't check the other side. Mast trees could be pretty productive over there and be attractive food source for, for game. <clears throat> You know, they talk about betting a lot, you know, or, or betting on wind. So you know, if, if the wind's kind of coming like this, they're going to bet on this side here, maybe here, here, this little section here, here. They have betting with wind. Let's say the wall's north, so north winds are going to bet on the south, the south facing slopes. As the wind wraps more to the northwest, they're going to start moving more to the southeast side of these slopes or, or points, so maybe over here more. And it starts to come west. And the run wind maybe parallels the basic the basic direction of the ridge. They might be bedding out from these here, or in these saddles right in the back side of some of these like lower areas on the saddle. Maybe they'll bed here, uh, or on this little knob we talked about earlier on the back side of it. Just with the you know the, basically with the wind at their back, bedding with the wind at their back, looking down over, using their eyes and ears to kind of scan the area below them. Um, I'm going to talk about the upper third, upper quarter or so of a mountain top or hill. Um, it's good areas to look for bedding. So I hope this uh, this topo table here um, at the Lancaster Science Factory was a helpful tool to just kind of represent, um, you know, a topo map and maybe help you guys better understand uh, when you look at all those lines on a map what they really mean and maybe help you to identify those things that really um, should attract us as hunters. All right, well, have a good day. Good luck out there.